Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And several of my subscribers have aware me of a video that Juji Mufu, aka John Call, did with none other than the genetic freak Clarence Kennedy. So let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing. Work on skill my crafting a little bit. Let's talk about this. Guys, I really enjoyed the video. I actually enjoyed it. You guys know I don't like most other fitness YouTubers. Uh, there's no secret about that. I think this, this industry is saturated with a bunch of garbage. I happen to like uh, Juji's channel. I happen to like it. Uh, good entertainment value. But it was interesting that they did a workout video. And they, they had a lot of fun with it. And a lot of joking around. And they brought Clarence Kennedy in. And, uh, you know, they were talking about training for bodybuilding. Bodybuilding and all these different exercises and angles. And getting a pump and all these machines, right? And then Clarence over there, no, I just squat. I just squat. And then they're asking him. You know, how many reps are you doing? Or how do you get a pump off of a single? How do you get a pump off of one rep? And Clarence kind of laughed and said, well, why do you want a pump? You know, and it kind of showed the divergence that we see in the training world these days. Even for guys trying to get jacked and strong, you know, you have this whole bodybuilding mindset. They were really, in a way, making fun of it. Uh, for people who understood that, they were really making fun of that idea that you need, you know, three different hamstring exercises. You need to be chasing a pump. Or, what was the other one that they said? One of the myths that I think I debunked with, with Jerry Ward a while back, well, if your back gives out, the squat is really, you know, a back exercise and not a leg exercise at that point. And then we have Clarence over there doing a 5x5 five five with 500 pounds on a beltless squat with forward lean. You know, that's the funny thing. You always get people who come in when they see any forward lean. Did anyone watch his squat form? Uh, this guy can squat 700 pounds without a belt. I won't people to let that sink in. That's a guy who can squat 700 pounds without a belt. He still has forward lean on his squat. He has fantastic legs, right? He has fantastic leg development, all things considered. Uh, you know, not necessarily by pro bodybuilding standards, but then again, who in the hell has anything that's the size of pro bodybuilders, unless you're, you're blasting twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of drugs a year? You're not gonna look like they do anyways. You know, but you saw that, that forward lean, that hip drive and everything in his squats. He doesn't have any back injuries. Now he talks about needing to train his core a little bit for that. You know, and they kind of went through that whole discussion, you know, and, and they kind of went through the whole thing and the different things. And um, that's kind of the interesting point. You know, bodybuilders will literally bring all this stuff up and it will be almost anything to avoid sometimes just getting really strong on the squat whereas in Clarence is like I don't know all I do for my legs is squat now he said he also does glute ham raises now uh, you know that was kind of an interesting side point uh, while we're on that topic let me step away from the squats for a moment Clarence Kennedy says he does glute ham raises Juji says that, you know, if he wanted to maximize his hamstring development, he would, do, he would do a bunch of glute ham raises, right? That's what I always tell you guys, man. That is probably the single best hamstring exercise ever invented. You know, if someone says that they really want big hamstrings, they want solid hamstring development, that would always be my go-to. I've said that for many years. Uh, you got two different guys, two different disciplines who still kind of fell back to the glute ham raise. I should tell you something. Um, I mean, I kind of wish I had the extra space and felt like buying one. Hell, eventually I might get one myself anyways just to have one around. I used to have access to one at a couple different gyms I've trained at. Uh, but that was an interesting point. So essentially, that's all Clarence really does besides the Olympic lifts. He back squats, back squats and does glute ham raises. That's, that's his leg development. The guy's got fantastic leg development. You know, and they went through that whole discussion of that. But then we get over to that point about the back, right? We get over that point about the back. And it's that this whole idea that people have uh, in the bodybuilding world that it's all about these individual body parts and another one limiting you. So therefore you've got to isolate this and that when the reality is that's why they have weaknesses. Uh, and something people don't think about. If you have a, a, such a weak back that your, your legs aren't getting enough development, that's because you did too much lower body stuff that didn't involve the back. Whereas you take guys like Clarence who've done nothing but squat done nothing but squat his training career, what happens? He gets to a 700 pound squat without a belt and his back doesn't become a limiting factor. Isn't that interesting? 
And you know why? Because a squat's a normal human movement pattern. And if you train a normal human movement pattern with progressive overload and focus on it for years and years and years, what happens? You get really strong at it and you don't really have those muscle imbalances. It's the guys who spent too much time on the leg extension machine, too much time on the hack squat, they don't have a strong enough back and core to actually squat heavy. They created an imbalance. In other words, when we start talking about injury prevention and, and everything else or sports or anything else in life, muscle imbalances are what can get you hurt. And if you're now in a situation to where your back isn't strong enough to handle what your legs can handle, you are imbalanced. Let me state that again. If you have created a situation to where your legs are too strong for you to be able to squat a weight because your, your back can't handle it, you have created an artificial muscle imbalance with bad training methods. And that's a different way to look at it. And so if you're going to talk about fitness, athleticism, that's actually a problem. That really is a problem. You're, everything should be built in unison. It should be built in unison. You know, if you really want to be fit, you really want to be athletic, you, I mean, and if you want to be jacked safely and be able to perform the way that you look, you need to be in balance. The squat does that. Squat does that. And here's the thing that's interesting. We start talking about this. People get so caught up in body parts instead of thinking about how much muscle can I gain. You guys remember that study I discussed this, this earlier this year? A big study that you had Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. You had Greg Knuckles. You had, uh, what's his name, the blue guy, Gre Brett Contreras, and several other researchers compile a bunch of data. And you know what they determined? That muscle mass was the single biggest factor relative to height to a person's one rep max on their squat that they could take any person who knew how to perform the squat and had practiced it so that you know that it wasn't a new movement for them they could run a dexa scan and compare their height to the amount of lean body mass on their body and they could get within 10 percent of their one rep max on the squat without knowing how they trained there is an enormous correlation between the amount of total muscle in your body again relative to height because height is an enormous factor we know that the shorter you are the less muscle you need to squat or lift a given amount of weight uh, we know that but they looked at it and found that so kind of what the point is that the barbell squat is very much as far as what you're capable of lifting on it whether it's a one rep max a five rep max whatever is a good proxy for the amount of muscle mass on your frame. You know, the squat works just about everything other than some of your show muscles. You know, your pecs, your delts, your arms, right? That's the only stuff that's not really being stimulated on barbell squat. So when people get caught up in this idea of leg training, I would almost say, and this is, I think they highlighted that really well for athletes. And again, Sean Clarence is a perfect example. Uh, instead of saying, hey, maybe I need to be training my body, they get caught up in, oh, it's, it's leg day, it's leg training. Instead of going, what are the most effective exercises for just getting me big and strong? And if I do that, will I eventually have the leg development? Now, Clarence has also pointed out he, he avoids letting his arms get too big. And that's probably the only thing not jacked on Clarence, his arms. And they're not terrible, right? They're not terrible because for Olympic lifting, having too big of arms could interfere with his direct sport, which he's a serious, serious competitor in. But outside of that, and because, again, he's got sports-specific reasons not to have jacked arms, just like in, uh, distance runners don't want big calves because it interferes with their sport. And that's what they found. The best distance runners are the people who have the smallest calves genetically. It's one of the best traits you can have to be a marathon runner or a long distance runner is to be born with small calves uh, so that they won't grow as big. Uh, but that's the interesting point. Everything else pretty jacked on the guy. And that's the other thing they really highlighted there. He does have jacked legs and all he does is squat. Other than now he does some core work and does some glute ham raises and other stuff. I think it's a, an all around good idea. But it was a great video because I think it really highlighted the divergence 
in the different schools of thought out there in the fitness world right now and then they did kind of laugh about all just all the the nuanced and, and silliness of we need to hit all these different angles we need a pump we need to worry about taking our back out of this all this other stuff while well, they've got clarence over there doing a five by five with 500 pounds on the squat without a belt and he has jacked ass legs just an interesting school of thought particularly when we take the massive amounts of drugs out of the equation see that's ultimately what it comes down to all this bodybuilding stuff that everyone does you do need to understand that really only works when the drug doses go up right start looking at some of the most jack natural legitimately natural guys like my bro nico ella who uh, comments on my stuff all the time i've known him for years he was one of my first like 15 youtube subscribers been a supporter for years Guy is, is jacked as hell. Barbell squat is his lower body exercise. That's what he does. You know, we, we know he can high bar squat at least 500. Guy does uh, sets of six, seven reps with 405, right? Regularly jacked legs, and that is his go to. And you know, you oftentimes find that to be the case. He focuses on the big barbell exercises, doesn't really even do curls. Worth noting. But all in all, I loved the video. I actually watched the entire thing. I very rarely do that with another video I want to review. Sometimes I can't stand them. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was well done, and I loved the video. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.